Hello, welcome back. How's it going? I'm doing good because today I got to make a start working on this thing. This is um, an arcade style controller specifically made for Sequence Storm. Um, I'm able to do this thank you to everyone who has supported my Indiegogo campaign for the next Sequence Storm expansion and also thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon as well. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do this. This is something I've wanted to do for so long, and I finally get to, so I'm pretty excited. Um, my name's Daniel. I'm the creator of Sequence Storm. It's a PC rhythm game. It's free to play on Steam, and all the links for all the stuff I'm talking about will be below. So, what am I talking about? Why am I doing this? Um, I always wanted to make an arcade-style controller for Sequence Storm ever since I started making it years ago. Uh, let's look at the sequence room though to get an idea about what I'm talking about. So, nope, that's not what I wanted. Unmute the game. All right, so this is a it's a rhythm game with nine different inputs. It's got these four column nodes. The note that goes all the way across, across called the jump notes. And these two orange and blue lines that I call zigzags. So, a lot of people, when they see this, they're like, okay, but can I play it with a sound Voltex controller? Yes, you can, um, but it's not ideal. Like, I have a pocket Voltex right here, and the, the biggest difference is in how I handle these uh, inputs. Uh, sound Voltex has a very analog style of control with these. However, my game, because I wanted it originally to be something, you know, a hardcore rhythm game that you didn't need a special controller for, so you can, it's really designed to play with primarily a gamepad. And so, where Sound Foldex has the lasers, Sequence Storms has, <laughs> Sequence Storm has what I call zigzags, which they're very digital because you play them with the uh, two thumbsticks on a gamepad, which are give you this cool like waggle click back and forth motion. Let me play this a bit with this. The column notes are controlled with all the, the shoulder and um, triggers. And then the zigzags, I'm playing very badly. Oh. I changed the scroll speed. Why did I do that? Now this is my jam. Accidentally. And then those wide uh, jump notes you can use with the, either the A button or down on the D-pad. So there's like a you know symmetry there. So I'm doing badly because I'm talking, but um, as you can see. In this game, it's a very much uh, digital click-clack back and forth type of control. You can play it with with the knobs on a sound voltage controller. It's just not as fun. It's hard to hit those timings. You really do have to hit it with like accurate timing in Sequence Storm. So, or the other way to play is on keyboard, and that's actually my favorite way because um, uh, so on keyboard you use uh, D, F, and J, K for the four column notes. And then ER and UI for the zig zigzags. And the spacebar for those wide jump nodes. And what happens on the keyboard is that you wind up, you have to move your hands around the keyboard in ways that are very unnatural. You kind of get used to it, and it feels kind of cool once you get into it. So those are all the main ways you can play Sequence Storm. And that's, I want to create a whole new way, a dedicated controller type of way. So Let's talk about the design. Here it is. Um, I've been mocking this up in Blender here, as you can see. Um, I don't have the joysticks yet, so how this is going to work, the four column nodes, nodes are these two inch by two inch four uh, row of buttons in the middle. The wide jump notes are going to be played with these um, little two by one buttons below them. Um, these cheap buttons are they're not great, like, you have to push so hard on these. I gotta figure out how to modify them so they're actually 
useful. And then, the, of course, the two joysticks that are going to go far to the left and right are going to be for the zigzags. And so unlike the knobs, that's, this is going to give you that really like click-clack uh, digital feel instead of just spinning a knob. Like the knobs are great for sound voltex, but this game has like a completely different design for all like the charts and stuff. And then these other buttons, so for the racing mechanic in the game, which happens in um, like the story mode, there's a boost button that has a few different uses, and so that it goes it's going to go right above the four column buttons there. Um, some more details about this layout. There's two buttons for the jump notes because often, uh, either on, well, often there's some jump note spam. So like you you have to like, um, what is the word? I can't think. Anyway, spam. So you have to press it quite click quickly, quickly. And so having two of them means that you can tap back and forth for uh, jackhammers. That's the word I was trying to think of, jackhammers. Um, and so also, the joysticks are placed, I think, close enough that you can hit the outer two columns and use the joystick at the same time. That's some. I have to actually get the joysticks first. This should all be to scale. Um, but that's part of the chart design is that often you can be doing zigzags and I know it's a thing in Sound Voltex 2 where the knobs are just close enough to where you know you can kind of manipulate both. I'd like it to be a little bit easier here with this design but I need the jump notes are really far away from the the joysticks because um, I to get more juggling I don't want to ever be able to um, you're basically gonna have to move hands from those these uh, jump buttons kind of in the middle and then back out to the to the joystick so that's gonna be a lot of fun juggling I've been designing charts with this thing in mind for a long time and finally I get to actually make it and test it so of course I've never played with this so this is all just for testing and once I test it maybe I won't like it but I'm gonna have to make make tweaks obviously like figuring out how to make these cheap Amazon buttons work nice that's something I have to figure out um, and then just testing the whole layout and making sure it works good I don't know exactly what buttons I'm gonna use for like the boost button and stuff oh these other ones there's a menu slash pause button slash back button there I might need one more menu button I'm not sure so that's why there's two more up there. And that's about it. So um, I'm going to continue to document this process as I develop this. Um, if you want one, you there's actually, this is one of the rewards on the Indiegogo. It's a steep price, but the price of it is for me to spend my time developing the product, you know, so it's not buy a controller. As, as it is on a fundraiser, you're not purchasing, it's a donation, and um, it's allowing me to even do this in the first place. So, I really appreciate everyone who's donated so far. I'm sitting at 80% funded, and there's 90s left. I think that's pretty cool that I've been able to raise $2,000 for this. I'm really happy with that. So, thank you to everyone who's donated already, and again, every all my uh, patrons. I think that's it. So I will continue to upload more updates on this. I update, I upload a lot of videos about Sequence Storm every week, and I do a stream every Saturday. So subscribe if you're interested in any of that. But um, yeah, that's it. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.